Now, when when you go to buy these investment properties, I'm, I'm assuming you're getting them at auction. Um, Sometimes. How does that how does that process work out? Like, as far as are you are you allowed to look at the home? Like, kind of have your I don't know have a, it's a sight and scene. Uh, yeah, so. are you allowed to have your own inspector come in just to do a preliminary before you buy it, or is it more so? I'm just rolling the dice on this based on maybe the information that was given to me. And then I'm pretty much going to unearth whatever issues are there when I, when it comes and I'll just deal with them when, 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 you know, we get to that point. Right. So it's different ways that real estate investors get properties. I've gotten them from all of the ways so far, but um, you know, you, you can, you can deal with wholesalers and we all know what wholesalers are for anyone who doesn't. It's basically the middleman, someone who finds a property and sells the property to you and they get a fee on top of that. So they're like an unlicensed realtor, if you ask me. But, um, you know, so you can make some good relationships with some wholesalers locally and, you know, you might be able to find a decent deal that way. Typically, they're a little more expensive than you probably want them to be because they're building an air fee. The second way is to just go the traditional way of, you know, what's on the market. Okay, now, right. the likelihood of you finding a flip at a, at a great price on the market, very low. And the reason why is because all the people that want to do it but don't really know what they're doing and they're bidding them up. And so for me, I found the most success going to uh, foreclosure sales. OK, now the way that that process works, it is sight unseen. Mm. Now, what happens is you'll get a list in advance of all the properties that are going up for sale. And so you can do your due diligence with figuring out exactly how much is worth. Remember, we talked about that. So I could, if I have an address, I could figure out, okay, well, what is this house worth fixed up? Okay, because I'm gonna have to assume worst case scenario. I can't see it. Yep. So what I might do to be a little bit creative, I'll, you know, look to see if they had any past listings. Mm. Maybe the house was sold three years ago and there's pictures so I can get an idea of what it might look like. Right. Um, the downside to going to an auction, aside from not seeing the being able to see the inside of the property, you could look at the, you could drive by it. So if you if you're really doing your due diligence, drive by the place, see make sure it's not it a tree. Like and all of that. Exactly. Get it, you could get some sort of idea yeah. of, of the outside of it. But. Um, without knowing what's going on on the inside, which is very risky, you also have to worry about getting the person that's in there out because the way the auction works, you're buying this debt from the bank. So you're taking on all the responsibility. It's your problem now. It's your problem if there's now. A, uh, if, there, if it's occupied, you own that occupant as well. <laughs> right. And you, and you now you need to go through the eviction process to get them out. Oh, wow. You know, so it's, it, you have a lot of risk when it comes to that. So the bank is glad to like, you want it? Here you go. It's take, all yours. Take it. Cause they got their money back yeah. for the most part. Right. And most of the time they're going to sell it for at least what they owe. Most of the time I've worked at the bank on that back end too, mm -hmm. to kind of see how that goes in the foreclosure process. But long story short, you know, you, you, you're, you're going to have to take on the risk of getting the person out, take on the risk of not knowing what's going on on the inside of that property. Uh, and that's why your numbers matter the most. I've had properties that I've gotten from the auction where, you know, I bought the house and the person that was standing there was a tenant in the house mm -hmm. and they were cool, kind. I actually ended up selling them another one of my properties <laughs> turned into a client turned them into a client sold them a property that i owned and only had to put 10 grand to fix it up and i sold it and made a good profit on it on the contrary mm -hmm. i bought houses That's not every deal no yeah. i bought a house man i had to do everything it had foundation problems mm -hmm. you know it was mold everywhere it was vacant Mm -hmm. So I at least didn't have to deal with getting someone out, but it's been vacant for like a what, whole year. What problem would you rather have? It's like hmm. vacant for a reason. <laughs> I think I might want to have the problem getting the person out versus these other problems that cost me more money. Man, that, man. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you might mess around, find one that's all dusted up, bust up, and the people don't want to leave. Mm. I Look, I, I, <laughs> I have some uh, other investor friends who bought a house two years ago, 
at the auction and the person that's living there still haven't left because they know the rules and the tricks to avoid you being able to easily kick them out. Mm -hmm. So fortunately they paid all cash, but just imagine if you had taken out a hard money loan mm -hmm. and you're having to pay a mortgage on that property. And two years later, that person is still in that house, not trying to leave. And there's nothing you can do about it, but continue taking them to court. But they appeal this and they file bankruptcy. So no more time. it's a lot, it's a lot of risk when you're talking about uh, going the auction route. I've been fortunate on most of mine, and it may not always be that way. Uh, one strategy that you can use if you do buy a house and someone's living in it, pay them to leave. Mm -hmm. Help them help them find another place, you know? No incentive. Right. Yeah. I, I've had to do that. Yeah. I've ha I've had to do that with a property of the t uh with with the property in Stafford and I had long term tenants. Mm. I said, wow. "Listen, man, I need you out by this date. Yeah. If you're out by this date, I give you two bands. Mm -hmm. But I need you out by this date and I need all your stuff out. Yeah. Mess up your long term money. Exactly. That two bands will help you get situated. Yeah. And guess what? He mm -hmm. did but what he needed to do. And the only reason why I did that was because I'm not just out here giving out money, but this was uh this was during this was post COVID where you couldn't kick people out if they wasn't paying. Now he was paying and I'm sitting back like, huh, does he know that he don't got to pay me? <laughs> so with me wanting him to leave so that I could do what I needed to do to convert it into an Airbnb, I didn't want to shake the boat up too yeah. much. And I wanted to incentivize him to go without him completely turning. So again, strategies are everything in real estate, but uh, yeah, that, that auction is, a, you can get a good price. You're not having to compete with everybody on the market, but at the same time, you got to take on the risk.